Good evening. I'm very sorry to stop you speaking with each other, but I would like to welcome you all um, this evening to the British Library. I'm Carol Black. I chair the board of the British Library, which is a great privilege, and we're delighted to see you here with us this evening. Imaginary Cities is a newly commissioned exhibition by our artist in residence, who's standing here, Michael Takedo Magruder, and it's transforming the British Library's online collection of historical maps into fictional cityscapes for the information age. About two hours ago, I had the wonderful privilege of an almost private tour by Michael of what you're going to see. I have to say for me, who's not at all really technologically um, highly competent, it was a wonderful experience. It's delightful, it's engaging, and it's highly informative. And I do hope you will feel that um, as you go round. Technology, as you will know, is at the heart of the British Library, um, from digitization to contemporary creative innovations. This exhibition highlights how the library is not merely a repository of knowledge, but a storehouse of creative potential for researchers, for artists, for entrepreneurs, and innovators to generate new ideas, insights, and inventions with the power to shape the future. And this is what you will see this evening. Michael, of course, is our artist in residence at the moment. He's a visual artist and works with new media, including real-time data, digital archives, immersive environments, mobile devices, and virtual worlds. But what really struck me about going around the exhibition with him was his great love also of wood and of metals and of combining his very modern technology with um, the much more established um, materials. In the last 20 years, Michael's projects have been showcased in over 280 exhibitions in 35 countries, and his art has been supported by numerous funding bodies and public galleries, both within the UK, the US, and the EU. Of course, I can't step down without making some thanks. And this exhibition is a, a, a great British Library team effort, but I particularly want to congratulate and thank our artist, Michael, and Martin McGrath for his creative exhibition design. Very big thanks go to our British Library Labs project manager, Mahendra Mehi, and our exhibition team, and Geraldine Kenny for their marvelous inspirational work. We would also very much like to thank the Echo Center for American Studies at the British Library for their very generous support of this exhibition. Such support, as you know, is absolutely vital to our work and enables us to engage, inspire, and share knowledge with 1.6 million physical visitors tens of millions of online audience, as well as vast audiences in partner librarieships across the UK. So Michael is now going to tell his own story. I said to him as we walk around, if you just tell everyone here tonight what you've told me, um, whatever you've written on your notes, just say it as you said it to me, that would be absolutely wonderful. So, Michael, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Dame Carol. And it's a real honor to be here. Um, it's kind of weird. I, this is the first time I've ever been asked to speak at an opening of mine. 
And so I was wondering, it's like, oh, what am I going to do? Um, well, luckily, you know, when you're putting together an exhibition, one thing always falls off the table, and it's usually the last thing. So we finished doing the documentation last night, which meant this morning we were dealing with press and other stuff, and I didn't have any time to write my speech. So you just get some notes that were done a few hours ago, and that's that. And I was thinking about, well, what am I going to say? Um, because I'm a firm believer, as Mark Rothko used to say, of just let the work speak for itself. Um, but I knew I wanted to give thanks. And I thought, in giving the thanks that I need to give, that I want to give, that kind of tells the story of this project. It started three years ago, where I met uh, Mahendra Mahay, uh, who is the manager of British Library Labs. And we met at a Lumen Prize event. He was there to see my work. And we got up talking had a conversation, he told me about labs and the wonderful things that, that that organization in the library was doing with the digital collections. He invited me to submit a proposal. I, I did that. I thought about working with collections and the One Million Images collections that it was part of the team that sort of uploaded to Flickr. And all of a sudden, it became a thing. So I became artist and researcher in residence. And so this whole thing started with Mahendra in our conversation. And then once that kind of was there in place, I thought, OK, I can't do this on my own. I need to bring in some of my collaborators. So David Steele, who's here today, somewhere in the audience, um, and Drew Baker, um, who's in Australia and can't join us tonight. They're my close friends and collaborators of over 20 years. David is the god of all things server. Andrew is the god of all things 3D. They truly are the top 1% of the 1%, and it's been a privilege to know them and work with them over the years. Um, and also, quite importantly, they understand what I'm trying to achieve and why I want to do it, and they indulge me in things like feature creep. And yeah, but we could just do such and such. And they're like, OK, OK. So they are the people behind the scenes that in many ways make the magic happen. I know enough about t technology to know what's possible, but I certainly can't do it myself. And so it's a privilege to have them on my team. And then once the residency was developing, once I had David and Drew there with me, then it was Adam Farquhar, the head of digital scholarship here at the library, which worked with Mahendra and myself to kind of take a small thing and scale it up to make it bigger, to do proper R&D, to support that, and to give myself and my team really um, the support we needed to really sort of go through, explore the ideas, make prototypes, and think about how this could actually become something real. And towards the end of that period, I was also working with um, Mila Skrova, who's the director of Gazelli Art House, which is a really leading commercial gallery and, and based in London. And Mila invited us to showcase the, the outputs of our R&D phase, um, both online through her platform, Gazelio, and, and also she invited us to do a, a special private sharing session of the physical works, the physical prototypes there in her Mayfair gallery space. Um, so without Mila, um, our prototypes don't get actually seen and discussed by, by my close colleagues and collaborators in academia and the arts. And from that, then, you know, Jamie Andrews, um, the head of culture and learning here at the BL, he was there and he had also been following the project and then Jamie started to talk with me about you know, how we could actually make this an exhibition in the library, you know, how we might actually showcase this work and bring it into something for the public. So without Jamie um, and, and working through and building, developing the proposal, this doesn't happen as well. And then once we were green-lighted to kind of go ahead, then um, Geraldine Kinney, the exhibitions officer, who probably at the time thought that she had drawn the short straw of getting to work with the artist, because who wants to do that? I'm, I'm sure in her line of work, it's always about, you know, there's never enough time, never enough resources, you know, everyone's always demanding something, and they never deliver what they say they're going to deliver. So I hope 
that through the course of our working together that I've changed her mind, at least about myself and my team. And we, we, we started to kind of joke, um, and as things would kind of come online, it was always on time and to specification. So from her, then there's another really important person here at the library that Dan Carroll, you mentioned, um, the Eccles Center, which is headed by Dr. Phil Hatfield. And Eccles is a main supporter of the show. They have helped fund the exhibition. They are funding the publication that is coming out about the exhibition, which will be released sometime midway through the showing. But before Phil was the head and director of Eccles, he was a digital maps curator here at the library. And it was actually Phil, in the early days of my residency, that turned me on to the, all the sort of the context of these maps that I wanted to work with. Because as an artist, I'm not just trying to take something and make a beautiful thing. I want to make something that's relevant. I want to understand its context, its history, its place um, in society. And it was really Phil that opened me up to that. Um, and without him, I wouldn't understand what I was working with. So I have to, I have to thank him. And then Martin McGrath, my designer. Martin is another sort of top 1% of 1%. And um, not only was he my designer through this project, he was also kind of my stand-in therapist. Um, because again, like all projects, never enough time, never enough money, never enough resources. Uh, but he found a way to work with me to make it happen. And to make it happen in a way that just, I hope you all think, is very beautiful. That's very enticing. Um, he's also uh, someone that's uh, really sort of willing to get dirty with me. So we always joke, it's sort of like, you know, I work with Martin because he's the best designer I know, but also he's willing to sort of be there at the end with me scrubbing the floor because that's what it takes to get it done. And that was my core team. And this doesn't happen without them. So it's not just me. But then sort of even looking further, there were so many other people that, um, interfaced and gave such important contributions to the project. Fotini Averani, who's somewhere probably here today. Um, she's a curator at Museum of London. Uh, Fotini, you know, here at the British Library, there isn't a curator of contemporary digital art. So who would I dialogue with? Who would I bounce ideas off of, you know, to, to kind of take me through as I was developing work? Well, when it, come, when it came to the art side, it was Fotini. Um, and then other people from industry and the, so the open source community. Um, the laser etching work was done with at Fab Lab in Coventry. And the digital printing work was done with Type Creative, also in the Midlands. And those organizations actually let me play with really expensive equipment for a long time, you know. And they, they allowed me to, as an artist, to experiment, to actually make. And that's an important thing, you know. Um, you, this kind of work, when you're doing really high-end digital process and, and technological things, you just can't sort of give someone a file and say, okay, make it. Because the things that I was trying to produce with my team had never been made before. So we were trying to find new ways to do this and experiment. So I owe endless thanks to those, those people to do it. And then, you know, other people, like uh, we wanted to do a title text. Martin had designed this beautiful like font for the exhibition and that would exist in a variety of forms. And one of them, he, he, had just, he had decided, he was like, for the title wall, I want a 3D text. And I was like, this is amazing. I was like, you realize how much this is going to cost if we get, a, we get a fabrication firm to make this. He's like, I know. I was like, you know we can't afford it. He's like, I know. I was like, you know you and I are probably going to end up having to do it because I want it. <laughs> He said, I know, but then luckily, um, Fab Lab Coventry had an intern, Ursa Cook, um, who unfortunately can't be here tonight because she had to go back to Slovenia. And she spent a week's worth of time making the title. You know? it, a contribution that everyone that has come into the space points out and says, wow, that's special. So without her, that doesn't happen. And then, you know, even down to like the technical team, um, Stefan, Bucharab, you know, Stefan is someone that everyone in the British Library knows. And they probably don't see the products of his labor all the time. Well, I can tell you right now, 
Martin and I, we, we believe in millimeter precision, and Stefan was the one that helped us realize that in the show today. So if you go in there and you see everything is perfect, beautiful, 90 degree angles, fine finishes, a lot of that is Stefan. It doesn't happen without him. And finally, uh, my partner Emma, who's right there filming. <laughs> um, when there is never enough time and resources and so on and so forth, as an artist, you're always trying to find ways to get extra capacity. And, and Emma is one of my ways of finding extra capacity. As I remember in this project, not only did she have to feed me in front of my workstation for usually three meals a day, as I was grinding through various problems and trying to create the work, but then also towards the end, when it came time to doing certain production things, um, she would hear me in the background sort of make some kind of promise, and I'd just be like, oh yeah, well, I'll get Emma to do that. I'll get Emma to do that. And then she would come up to me as like, oh, what is Emma doing? And then I would explain, and then either two hours or sometimes two days later, that thing would be done. And so there's a lot of stuff that she had to do for the show. And that's, you know, I could go on and on and on. Um, but without these people, this show starts to fall apart. All the things that you will walk in, you will say, wow, that's a real special aspect of the show. Probably don't happen if all these people that I've talked about, you know, don't contribute. And it doesn't really stop there. If we think about the digital collection, the one million images from Scan's book collection that I worked with, that collection, yes, the BL Digital Scholarship, they put it up online, but it was the volunteer community who tagged it over the last five years, who enriched it with metadata that made it usable for an artist like myself to come in and explore it. Without them, this doesn't happen. And finally, the British Library itself, one of the things that I hope to do with this show um, was to make an exhibition that members of the public would come in and they would be amazed by. They would see the beauty of the possibilities of working with archives in both a digital and a physical way. But I wanted it to be a celebration of the last 20 years of research and infrastructure support of development that the library has done in the digital. You know, without that, this is not possible. So if members of the public come in here and they like what they see, they enjoy the experience, they find it worthwhile, they cannot discount that 20 years of R&D, of scholarship, of work that the library has invested in to make this happen. You know, and I think about, you know, what did I actually make the exhibition with? I started with one million images, but I know, and I, I actually did the math, it's far more than a million hours of people's work have gone in to make this possible. So that's where I will end my thanks. You know, it's not just about me. Thank you. Michael, thank you very much. I'm going to detain you no longer. I'm going to declare the exhibition open and hope you will enjoy it and also continue to have a glass of wine with us. Thank you very much.